Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 259 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating a use of ultra-low dose of contrast for performing a CTO intervention. The patient was a 57-year-old gentleman who presented with non-STEMI. He did have previous coronary bypass, diabetes, hypertension, and chronic kidney disease with a GFR of 15. And then he was found to have an injection fraction of 35 to 40% with uh, inferior regional wall motion abnormalities. Coronary angiography showed a severe disease on the left system, CTO of the right coronary artery with heavy calcification. There was an occluded vein graft going to the right, but there was a patent lima going to the LAD, which was in turn providing collaterals going to the posterior descending artery. We did, uh, during the diagnostic angiogram, a brief attempt to advance a soft wire through the vein graft in case the vein graft occlusion was acute. However, the vein graft uh, uh, could not be wired easily with the soft wire. As a result, the procedure was stopped and the patient was uh, taken off the table, followed by a hard team discussion. He was not considered to be a good candidate for repeat coronary bypass and he was subsequently referred for PCI of the right coronary artery CTO. The RCA has a clear cap, although it is a little blunt. There is heavy calcification, occlusion is about 20 millimeters. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased, and there is a PDA PLV bifurcation at the distal cap. As far as collaterals go, there was the occluded vein graft that was going to the PDA before, and currently it is the lima that is filling the LAD and then through septals filling the PDA. Our plan in this case was to use the occluded vein graft going retrograde, not only because it might be safer, but also to minimize contrast use, and if that didn't work, to try undergrade crossing. So we engaged the vein graft with a multi-purpose guide, we used a Corsair Pro microcatheter, a Gladius Mongo wire, which is the standard setup for crossing occluded vein grafts, and uh, the Mongo actually went easily down to the PDA and then retrograde towards the distal right coronary artery. Here is a tip injection after we crossed the vein graft, demonstrating the PDA, and then the flow going all the way back to the bifurcation of the PDA and the posterior ladder. We were able to advance the microcatheter to the distal cap, and then once again we used the Gladius Mongo guide wire, which um, was able to penetrate through the distal cap, and now it is moving along the distal right coronary artery. Now the Mongo was in the mid right coronary artery, so we came undergrade with a turnpike spiral, a filter XTA guide wire that seems to be going extra plug and is very close to the retrograde guide wire. So we do have those two wires, the undergrade and the retrograde overlapping, which is great setup for reverse cart. We also tried to advance a guide catheter extension, but couldn't go very far because of severe calcification. But eventually we were able to advance the retrograde wire inside the undergrade guide extension. The problem, however, was that um, we could not cross neither in the retrograde direction or in the undergrade direction, we actually did the tip in and tried to advance uh, a undergrade microcaster and couldn't cross either direction. We then tried a 1.0 millimeter balloon, but once again, we were unable to cross either the undergrade or the retrograde direction. So what to do next? Clearly, the issue here was the severe calcium in the mid RCA. So we decided to make an attempt to wire that segment using a rotor wire. This is a roto wire drive floppy, and uh, there was some difficulty, but then the wire seemed to advance down, and actually we were able to advance it down to the distal RCA. So we then did um, a few runs to modify this proximal cap. Again, we try to stay away from the distal segment of the rotor wire that is 0 0.014 versus 0 0.009 for the rest of the wire. And uh, we were actually able to modify this segment of the right coronary artery. So we did the reverse cart again. This time we didn't need the guide extension. The retrograde wire was advanced easily into the undergrade guide catheter. And this time we were able to advance the retrograde microcatheter into the undergrade guide catheter. 
and externalize an R350. We predilated the dire RCA, but had a lot of difficulty expanding the distal RCA because of calcium, and that is why we decided to do a little more rotational thyrectomy. We inserted the rotor wire into the posterior lateral and did uh, several rotablation runs of the distal RCA into the right posterior lateral. There remains some un under expansion in the mid right coronary artery. This is why we did intravascular lithotripsy. And after doing that, we were able to deploy stents using intravascular ultrasounds for de guiding our standing, all the way from the distal RCA, just proximal to the bifurcation, all the way to the ostium of the right coronary artery. And then we just did one injection. And this was the first full injection during the case, in which we see the final result. We see there is no perforation. We have a good flow in the right coronary artery. There is diffuse disease distally, but we decided to not treat this for the time being, and the patient actually did pretty well. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that in patients with advanced CKD, our patient was stage 4 with a GFR of 15, you're going to do stage PCI, because otherwise the high contrast dose might predispose to acute kidney injury. Now, in those patients, it is uh, important to minimize the dose of contrast. This can be done in various ways. In our case, we use the primary retrograde approach through the occluded vein graft. We use the tip injection through the microcatheter instead of guide injection. And then we used intravascular ultrasound to modify the plaque to make sure we had good expansion and also to confirm we had a nice result before standing, and then took just one picture at the end to confirm a good result and to also verify we did not have any complication, such as perforation. Another difficulty we had in this case was uh, the inability to advance uh, microcatheters through this heavily calcified mid right coronary artery. This was done by advancing a rotor wire and doing rotational atherectomy, both uh, into the mid-RCA and then eventually also in the distal RCA. Thank you.